ATP synthesis. Now this binding change mechanism is the widely accepted model for ATP synthesis. Now this Paul Boyer, the scientist developed this binding chain mechanism or flip-flop mechanism which suggests that the ATP synthesis is coupled with the conformational change of the ATP synthase which results due to rotation of gamma subunit. Okay, this gamma subunit of ATP synthase undergoes rotation and that results into the conformational change in the ATP synthase and this conformational change in ATP synthase then results in the ATP synthesis. Okay, this is what is suggested by this binding chain mechanism or flip-flop mechanism which was developed by Paul Boyer. Now the proton translocation through F0 powers the rotation of the gamma subunit of F1 ATPase and this leads to the changes in the conformation of the nucleotide binding site in the F1 beta subunit. Okay, in F1 beta subunit, there is change in the conformation of the nucleotide binding site. Why? Because of the rotation of the gamma subunit of F1 ATPase. And why this uh, rotation of gamma subunit of F1 ATPase happens? It happens because of the proton translocation through F0. Now, because of this binding chain mechanism, the F0 F1 complex is able to harness the proton motive force which then power the ATP synthesis. Okay, F0 F1 complex harnesses the proton motive force and that is then used to power the ATP synthesis. Now this diagram represents the binding change mechanism of ATP synthesis from ADP and PI by the F0 F1 complex. Now as you can see the molecule contains three binding sites. Okay, this one, this one and this one. Okay, there are three binding sites there and as the molecule rotates the conformation of these binding sites changes accordingly. Now in stage one the open state O is empty, okay. This O represents open state, this L represents L state and this T represents tight state, okay. There are three, three states of these binding sites. O for open state, L for loose state and T for tight state. Now in this stage one, the O state is empty. There is nothing at O state. The loose state that is L state contains ADP and PI and the tight state contains ATP. Okay, this is what the condition is in the stage 1. Now this is the logical intermediate state. From stage 1, this thing goes into the logical intermediate state. Now when the stage 1 goes into logical intermediate state, it goes by the rotation of this gamma subunit by 120 degree Celsius. And when there is rotation of this gamma subunit, as you can see, the L state is converted to T state, the T state is converted into O state and the O state is converted into L state. Okay, The loose state becomes tight, tight state the tight state becomes open state and the open state becomes loose state. Okay, when there is a rotation of this gamma subunit by 120 degrees Celsius. Now in this intermediate state, this L state can accept a new ADP and PI pair. And the T state converts this ADP and PI into ATP. Now when this intermediate state goes into the stage 2, then in stage 2 the ATP has released from the open stage 
and L stage has accepted ADP plus PI and this T state has made ATP. Okay. The process of this was uh, going on in the intermediate state. This intermediate state was about to synthesize ATP. It was about to release ATP and it was about to accept ADP and PI. And in stage 2, this complex has released ATP from O state. It has accepted new ADP and PI at the L state and it has produced ATP at the T state. So this is the binding chain mechanism of the ATP synthesis. Now the three F1 beta subunits alternate in their three conformational states. And these three conformational states differ in for their binding affinities for ATP, ADP and PI. Okay the three conformational states have different binding affinities towards ATP, ADP and PI. Now O state which is referred to as open state binds weakly to ADP, ADP and PI. Then there is L state which is referred to as loose state. This L state binds loosely to ADP and PI. And at last there is T states which is referred to as tight state. This T state binds very tightly with ADP and PI which results in the formation of ATP. So you have O state. O state binds very weakly with the ATP, ADP and PI. Then there is L state. L state binds loosely with ADP and PI. And then there is T state which binds very tightly with ADP and PI, which results in the formation of the ATP. Now the phosphoanhydride bond of the ATP is synthesized in T state and ATP is released in only O state. Okay, see, so in O state, the ATP is released and the phosphoanhydride bond of the ATP is synthesized in T state. Now the free energy which is released during proton tra translocation is harnessed to interconvert these three states. Okay, so the three states that we just saw, this O state, L state and T state are interconverted and they are interconverted by the free energy which is released during proton translocation. Now the change in conformation occurs due to the rotation of the gamma subunit. Okay, gamma subunit rotates and that changes the conformation from O state to L state to T states. Okay, the rotation of gamma subunit is responsible for that. Now the 120 degree rotation of this gamma subunit in clockwise direction changes one conformation state to another state okay the rotation of the gamma subunit by 120 degree I really hope I never set 120 degrees Celsius in this whole explanation I really hope that so uh, when gamma subunit is rotated by 120 degree then that uh, it, uh, then that uh, uh, results in the change of one conformation state to another conformation state it is 120 degree the rotation of the gamma subunit relative to the fixed alpha 3 beta 3 complex occurs in discrete 120 degree steps and because of this conformation of each beta subunit changes in this way from O state to L state and then from L state to T state and again from T state to O state. Okay, this is how the conformation of each beta subunit changes because of the rotation of the gamma subunit. Calculation of free energy change. Now the standard free energy change because of the movement of protons across the membrane 
with respect to electrochemical proton gradient can be calculated by Nernst equation which is delta G is equal to minus N F into delta E. Okay, by this equation you can calculate the standard free energy change because of the movement of protons. Now we can calculate the amount of free energy released by passage of one mole of protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane with respect to the electrochemical gradient of 220 millivolts by using above equation and we get the free energy that is delta G as minus 5074 calorie per mole or minus 5.1 kilocalorie per mole so when you when you pass one mole of protons down the electrochemical gradient of 220 millivolt then minus 5.1 kilocalorie per mole this amount of free energy is released now this atp synthase requires three protons okay three h plus ions to synthesize one ATP. Okay, so to synthesize one ATP, there should be translocation of three protons. However, the most widely accepted experimental value for synthesizing one ATP is translocation of four protons. And why is that? Because the transport of ATP, ADP, and PI is also driven by proton gradient okay so most widely accepted experimental value for synthesizing one atp is the translocation of four protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane so when four protons go from the intermembrane space to the mitochondrial matrix through atp synthase then one ATP is synthesized and hence when 10 protons are pumped out because of 1 NADH then according to this calculation 1 NADH is responsible for the synthesis of 2.5 ATPs okay when 1 NADH is oxidized with through the electron transport chain there is pumping of 10 protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space and from intermembrane space when 4 proton goes back to the matrix through ATP synthase one ATP is produced and that is the reason why one NADH is responsible for the translocation of 10 protons and hence it is responsible for synthesizing 2.5 ATP molecules so this is how this value comes, 1 NADH responsible for synthesizing 2.5 molecules of ATP.